Hey everyone, this is Ranger14 doing tips and advice. This week we're going to do Jungle Post 6. This video is about what the jungler should evolve into later in the game. This is about initiating, how you should have map control, and the other things that you should do around the map. Tip number one, use that ultimate. As soon as you hit 6, gank a lane with that ultimate. Keep your ultimate on cooldown. This doesn't mean waste your ultimate. This means use it as many times as you can. Make the lanes afraid of you. Let them know when they see you, you're probably going to ultimate and kill them. Tip number two, battle the League of Wards. Grab a quick oracles and clear the wards so you have more map control and more presence. Don't buy an oracles if you think you're going to die. Also, after you clear a ward, this means that the lane is vulnerable, so make sure to gank it in a reasonable time. Tip number three, objective-based play. Objectives are Baron, Dragon, Towers, and Buffs. We just ganked bottom and forced them back to the fountain, so we're going to take their tower, and then we're going to head up and take Dragon. Completing objectives gives your team tons of gold, which will help your allies greatly in team fights. Tip number four, boots and mobility. The reason why I'm talking about boots and mobility is I think it's really important for a jungler that's constantly ganking. When I play a Moomoo, I am constantly going from lane to lane trying to get as many ganks off as possible. They are also very useful in escaping tricky situations and get initiates off when you're chasing down enemy champions. I will sell these boots eventually if I feel like I need Ninja Tabby or Merc Treads in the late game, but for the early ganking phases, I'm definitely trying to zip around the map as fast as possible. For this next tip, I'm going to show you two different clips showing that difference in the timing. So tip number five, ultimate timing. Here, I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to show you that I'm not going to initiate with my ultimate, because all I have to do is knock her towards my ally. As soon as I see that Jarvan does show up, I use my ultimate so we can disable both of them and pick off the kill. Now it's a two-on-one situation because I didn't initiate with my ultimate. If I did initiate with my ultimate, things would have been a little bit trickier. In this next clip, I'm playing a Moomoo, and I'm going to use my ultimate as soon as I get into the fight. I want them to be held in place so that my team can get into the location and do as much damage as possible. I wait for the creep wave so that if I do miss the bandage toss, I'm going to hit a creep. As soon as I get in there, I use my ultimate and graves piles on the damage. Depending on the champion that you have and how a lane is pushed will determine how you have to gank a lane. Because they were at their tower, the easiest way for me was to go all the way around and come in from behind. Because I was playing a Moomoo, I was able to take a couple more hits. If I was playing a more squishy jungle, I wouldn't be able to take as much. So understand what champion you were playing, what perks, and what disadvantages you have so that you're able to successfully gank every lane. In this clip, I'm playing Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is a little bit squishier and my role is a little bit different. I'm not trying to initiate, but I'm definitely trying to get my ultimate in there as soon as a team fight starts. So as soon as the team fight breaks out, I ultimate in and we do a lot of damage to the entire team. We have a huge AoE comp. So understand again what your champion is and what their role is. Tip number six, use the summoner to secure the gank. The reason why you have the summoner is to help your champion pull off ganks. Here I have Flash on Skarner so I can get to my opponent that I want to grab. If I'm playing a champion like Shivana or Kha'Zix, I use Exhaust because I have no problem getting into melee range, but I want to exhaust them to keep them in melee range. So be very conscious about what you choose and how that will affect how you gank. Now we're going to step farther into the game where I am the initiator. Tip number seven, know your target. The target is generally the ADC. So right here, Twisted Fate is their ADC. When he steps forward, I hit him with a hook and pull him to my team. This throws their entire team balance off, and we're able to open up and do as much damage as we can to the ADC. This is generally why I pick a jungler that is tanky or has a really good initiate. You want to be able to help your team as much as possible and make plays happen. Here's another clip of a team fight. I know my target is Twisted Fate. As soon as he gets close enough, I pop Shirelia's and my shield to run up to him as quickly as possible. I grab him and pull him back to my team, and my team is able to easily pick him off. Just because you pick a target doesn't mean that everything should be spent on him. The entire idea around the fight was for me to pull Twisted Fate into Morgana's ultimate, have Morgana hit him with the ultimate, and just to kill him in between that. Those are the only two abilities we were going to use on Twisted Fate. The rest of the abilities we are going to use for the rest of the team. So don't spend all your abilities on one target just because that was the target that was called out. Tip number eight, location, location, location. Here they're chasing down my teammate. I'm waiting for him to get into a position where I can get all their team with my ultimate. As soon as I start funneling down this narrow passageway, I head back into the enemy team and cast my ultimate. Now Graves is able to turn around and use both of his abilities to do a maximum amount of damage. Because of our patience and waiting for the right location, we maximized how much damage our abilities can do. Depending on your team comp is where you want to have the fights. If you have a lot of AoEs, you want to force them down a choke point so that all your AoEs can hit all the enemy champions. Understand your champion and where you want to fight. Tip number nine, be in the front. If you're playing a tanky jungle initiator, don't let them touch your squishies. They're your squishy. Keep them safe. Here I open up on Sona. I'm watching who goes through the choke point. Bane tries to go by, I'm like, uh, stop, and I push her back. I'm not letting her get to my squishies. Super secret ninja tip, if your carries die, your damage dies with them. So again, I'm staying with my team, I'm not spreading out, I'm protecting my team. Bane has done very little damage because she can't get into the fight. If your team moves as one unit, it's really hard for them to pick off anyone and do any damage without taking a whole bunch of damage themselves. So try to stay as a unit and protect your team. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate every one of you. The next video will be an ADC. It's going to be a duo, so 
please stay tuned for that. I'm also going to the championship on the 13th. If you're going to be there, let me know. I'd love to hit you up and say hi. Please subscribe, comment. It really helps me get these videos out there and my name out there. Anyway, my name is Ranger14, and I will see you in the next video.